What's happening, friends? Welcome to Unlocked. It is already November, November 8th, 2017. This is episode 321 of the world's number one Xbox show. Coming up this week, uh, we are talking about a big new Phil Spencer quote. He addressed the first party game situation on Xbox and what his thinking is there for the current and future of first party. Also, three more Backwards compatible 360 games got Xbox One X specific enhancements. We'll talk about those. A new UFC game announced, and uh, 2K is hinting at something big. Maybe Borderlands, maybe Bioshock. Uh, all that and more coming up. Don't forget, if you do enjoy the show, check out and subscribe to the Unlocked specific YouTube page. We're at youtube.com slash IGN Unlocked. All right, I'm Ryan McCaffrey. To my right, Happy to be joined uh, every now and again, including this week by our Call of Duty World War II reviewer, Miranda Sanchez. Hello. We'll talk about that uh, shortly. Alana Pierce. Hi. Always good to see you, of course. Thank you. And all the way from IGN Australia, I love seeing you every time I get the chance, which is only like two or three times a year. I know. The great Lucy O'Brien. Listen, it's so nice to be here, um, but I just can't actually like talk about myself when we have... I was going to say that. Yeah. I was like, 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 like I can't like, be, the one, on the table. Yeah. I can't yeah. be the one that's like, it's so. It's such an honor. <laughs> it's so fantastic because there's this adorable dog. Yeah. Anyone who's listening to the audio version, we have a puppy on the table. Yeah, You should probably the, come just, look at the video. The, the butt you're staring that's at on, uh, <laughs> on the video version is a now snoozing Aww. Daisy the Boxer and uh, here she is so you can you can compare someone needs to tweet me a picture in picture like a side by side of when she was on the desk mm. the first time I brought see her how much like bigger three she or four is. weeks ago yeah to see how much yeah. bigger she is now and I'll just keep doing this till she doesn't fit on the desk anymore well, it's just, I've seen photos of Daisy but I had no idea that she was this small yeah no like, I know that you you say that she's gotten bigger but yeah. to me she's just, just this tiny little animal right like a chihuahua like size a tiny <laughs> little <laughs> she yeah. is way smaller than I expected her to be yeah, you just look at those paws, though. She's gonna get. Oh, she's. Do you guys want to just talk about uh, the whole thing? I mean, what really, we I mean, do? she's. We can. We can all. No matter. Uh, she's the great uniter. She PlayStation, is. Xbox, Nintendo. Daisy. Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All of them love Daisy. Put that on the t-shirt. <laughs> uh, so Lucy, you're out here for some business. Yep. Uh, she's how, doing a Forza. Yeah, that's the business. Yeah, how mm -hmm. how has uh, which you'll see on IGN eventually? I don't even. I literally don't even know what your timeline is. You're filming this week, and then you're. You I know, have no idea whatever. what my timeline is, and I'm getting on a plane, <laughs> and then someone does you're, something with yeah, it. Yeah, you're just the talent. I'm the talent. You're just the talent. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm curious. What what is the so the Xbox One X is out? We had Albert Pinello in here last week. Thank you all so much for the very very kind feedback on that episode. I, I thought it was one of our best episodes in a while. Thanks to. Albert, he just we had a great conversation. If you missed last week's show about the origins of the Xbox One X, and timeline goes back pretty far. Yeah, mm -hmm. 2012. Um, yeah, 2012. A lot of gr good detail from from Albert there. Uh, well, how has the Xbox One X been, the, like buzz wise, build up wise in Australia? Like, has it? Do you think it's mirrored what you see on Twitter and the rest of the world? Or yeah, I don't think there's any. Um I mean, it's still very early days because basically I left and it it came out. Yeah. Um, but just the lead up to it. I'm the, saying, like, yeah. Is this the Australian community? Do you feel like they're more excited about it than the rest of the world? The no, same. I was West, always like of the impression that uh, Australia is more Xbox orientated than PlayStation. I always got that vibe definitely, too. It, it definitely was, and then PlayStation Four came along and sort of disrupted that. Um, and then I think Xbox gains more ground. Um, and they're now sort of more on an even playing field. Mm -hmm. But definitely, like, Xbox 360 was the console in yeah. Australia and New Zealand. Well, all of my Australian friends, I play with them only on Xbox. So I have, like, some games that I buy on both platforms so yeah. that I can play with Australian friends who play on Xbox or PS. American friends who play on PlayStation. And it still seems to be that way. A bunch of my Australian friends have been posting photos of their Scorpios and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Apparently mm -hmm. super limited. Yeah, we've right? got one on the desk. We yeah. finally... Yeah. And, you know, I hadn't actually... When I brought it in here... It's the first time I'd actually picked it up. Oh yeah, you know, it's been yeah. Events. It's a dense little thing. It is. Like it it's is. small, but it's like it's a. It's like it's a. It's defying physics on the inside. It's like it's, than like you it's think a it black hole inside. Yeah. Like it's it's antimatter. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's definitely it. it's heavier heavy. than the ass. Yeah. And, it's, and again, it's not a complaint. Just a random observation. It's mm -hmm. so cool how tiny It'll the thing is. It'll be secure in your home entertainment system. Yes. Red well, no, I mean, I no things to knock it over. Exactly, and and I just I just got an Xbox One X and replaced my like day one 
Xbox One. Yeah. And just suddenly realized the the glory of removing that power pack yeah. from the back of my TV. Never that, again. That, like horrible little thing that was little. Like, well, little, no. that horrible <laughs> huge thing. It was it sort of reminded me of the Duke, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, it was yeah. like but it was like something that never went away. Except yeah. there will never be nostalgia for the power break. No, there will never be nostalgia for the power break. No, oh, the, the, like, the Duke's coming back. Seamus <laughs> Blackley's making it again. Oh, yeah, that's Nobody's right. ever gonna go like Gonna buy a special edition Xbox <laughs> 480. It's true, just for power the power pack. hundred that has a power. Pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a Gears of War six <laughs> power pack. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's so quiet and just so um, it's very sleek and 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 it it, it sort of very very much complements uh, the rest of my consoles. And uh, yeah, my cat's tail doesn't turn it on every time he walks past. Yeah, the capacitor. <laughs> and I know that they got button. rid of that with the Xbox One S, yeah. but yeah, again, it's been a while since. Uh, That's a big deal. It yeah. is. I worry about my cats when I'm gone. I'm just like, please just don't turn this on. Oh, <laughs> he's it done it in Overwatch matches. And like, you oh, can't, yeah. you can't oh, be gosh. angry at him because it's just his like happy little cat tail. Right. Yeah. Like he's just very happy and it's very erect. Yeah, you know? my cats. Like, <laughs> so. Yeah, my I was trying to that. avoid saying that word. But no, I you went right for it. It's really just did. Like yeah. Yeah. Term. Right in the Yeah, yep. it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I have people bump into my Xbox on my desk at work all the time. And then I'll just come back and it's on. I'm like, how long has this okay, been? Okay, I'm going to be honest. My <laughs> all the time. PS4 and my Xbox One are really close together. And obviously yeah. I play my Xbox One more than my PS4. Mm -hmm. But all the time I'll be like trying to adjust something where my consoles are. And I will accidentally eject a disc from my PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, why? Yeah. Again? Yeah. It happens all the time. Or like I like look up and my PlayStation is on and I'm like, what? How? <laughs> if, we're, if we're talking superficial aesthetics uh, of, of, on consoles, which we are, um, you know, I still struggle to figure out where the, the on ejects. button is on my PlayStation. On PlayStation oh, I always forget. Like, I still, which one's ejected? I'm like, yeah. oh, which one is it? No, I do that too. <laughs> Someone taught me a stupid thing, like a saying to remember which one was what. And like, cause I always do it in the dark. Like it's dark. It's just, I don't want to turn I think the top light. one is yeah. the power button and the bottom one is the eject button. Still don't know. Oh, Still I couldn't tell confirm. you. Marty makes fun of me for that because I've said it before. He's like, you're an idiot. It's two things. I'm like, yeah, but shut up. But they're like right on top of each other. The, they look this I can't really small. Yeah. So we it's did uh, We did give the Xbox One X a 9 out of 10, 9.0 out of 10. Brandon Tyrell did the review. Very comprehensive. He ran th literal thermal tests yeah. with it, oh with a heat gosh. gun yeah. Uh, yeah. to compare the how it runs at temperature or what temperature it's going like with a game at you know full bore compared to the, the Xbox One, the S, and the PS4 Pro. With a lot of third party graphics comparisons. Yeah. And very thorough. Yeah, yeah, very thorough. He loved it, obviously, nine out of ten. So yeah, I mean, happy Xbox One X week to all those who are partaking. Uh, I'm actually very curious. I want I'm gonna borrow one of them now that we have we finally got a couple of more. We bought yeah. a couple more for the office. Microsoft just sent us the one um, for office use. I, you know, I don't have a 4K TV, and that's why I've said I'm not buying one for now. But I, I'm eager to take it home and see what it looks like on a 10 display. TV. Like yeah. Yeah. Microsoft has touted benefits, and and Brandon did in his review address that and said, yeah, you can you can definitely tell. So I'm eager to see it for myself what totally. uh, what it does yeah. for 1080p stuff. Yeah, well, I've heard the UI is just a lot faster, and I think Brandon talks about that in his review yes. a little bit as well. So like, I think that makes a difference. Like in the very least, it's easier to move around everywhere. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing that came out on Friday, uh, well, the X was yesterday as we record, and then Friday was Call of Duty World War II, right? Dutifully <laughs> reviewed <laughs> by Miranda Sanchez. Uh, I have been most excited, more excited about this Call of Duty than at least the last few years. Oh, me too. And your reviews up. Uh, it's mm -hmm. it's. A, Let's talk about thorough. It's a three-page review. Oops. Extraordinarily in depth. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Like I got to the end because <laughs> essentially I almost reviewed each chunk as its own thing unintentionally. Like, of course, it's a cumulative score. But sorry, Miranda, we're just taking photos of the dog because she's very cute. <laughs> but I am listening. I'm He's like, so I'm, like cute. I'm like, yes, stupidly. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. keep talking. Yeah, no, but this dog's so <laughs> cute. <laughs> of course, she's not. You know, she's facing us. Ryan. And the camera, well, but. but it's a cool shot because you can see everyone in the background on the, the, yeah, monitor, the monitor that we have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, so I was very thorough. Like We didn't go to the review event as st stated in our review in progress, yeah. which is now just the review. Um, so I had to turn this around really quick, and people were throwing a lot of comments around, like asking, like, hey, where is this review? It's after the weekend. Um, but for me, it was really- We don't really, do review events. So. Yeah, it's it was really important for me to get a lot of time with this, and I don't remember what my 
end time ended up being. But of course, I finished the campaign rather quickly and then spent so much time in multiplayer and in zombies. Um, and that's, like I said, very important to me, make sure it is thorough. And How is zombies? Oh, it's the best. That's the thing I'm most I excited about. I want to go play about. it so bad again. Right? You, you, except you have to have a good team. Like, obviously, yeah. that's important, but yeah. communication in this one is very, very important, not only for survival, but because there's like kind of a, a mainline quest in it. And mm. there's like a little story going through it. And that's David cool. Tennant's in it. It's delightful. Um, but some of the objectives in that quest have you do very timed things that needs coordination between your team. Right. And if you don't have a mic, and if the rest of your team doesn't have a mic or doesn't know what to do, then it's really hard to execute. I always like that, though. Like, yeah, I think me that kind of makes it better, but it, it does suck for anyone who doesn't have a team. Yeah, that was my big disappointment with it is that I try to play online just with random people to see what that experience was like. And if you're not just trying to survive like waves and waves of enemies, then you're not going to have as good of a time trying to get through it because I had to like teach the team I was with how to do everything by just like jumping and shooting at things because there's no oh, in-game no. Right. without a mic. No like pinging system. Yeah. That would be cool actually. Yeah, that would be nice, but I kind of understand because every button is used for something, so except for maybe one of the inputs and in the, the sticks, but I don't know. It would yeah. be a complicated process for them mm -hmm. to figure out, but a thing that still is a little, little detrimental to it, but is yeah. my favorite mode of all of them. I just Ryan, find the whole like idea of you jumping up and down and like shooting at <laughs> Those things. Those are oh, precious. I've absolutely done that online. In the face of waves of <laughs> yeah. zombies, in a game called Call of Duty World War II. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it's just, it's pretty it gets really frustrating. Pretty funny. <laughs> like, I would run out of jolts and I'm like, I need someone to open this door because if we don't do it now, the next wave's harder or like the several waves, we need to, we're behind schedule. And <laughs> I was like, guys, please just open this door. And like I couldn't say anything. So I just like shoot and just jump frantically and like run up to people, then jump and then run. Yeah. <laughs> it's very silly, but of course playing with friends made it. There, yeah. there are so many alternate reality uh, zomb uh, Nazis to shoot between yeah. the well, <laughs> Nazi zombies in Call of Duty World War II and the, the Wolfenstein yeah. 2 versions. Yeah. But I was going to say, Ryan and I played a tiny bit of the campaign yesterday, and I thought Just it was a little bit. really pretty. Oh, it yeah. It is. It's sure. And we were it's playing well on, voice a, on acted a and relatively cr crappy monitor. Like it was, oh, yeah. Like yeah, we yeah. weren't on a big, sweet TV. Yeah, but we were playing on the X, and it, it, I thought it looked great. It also, I like the way that it opened up as someone who hasn't played a Call of Duty campaign since Modern Warfare. Mm -hmm. um, so, right here. It's weird that a lot of people are kind of like that, but yeah. uh, that it opened up kind of with you not technically in combat. You were trying to get through the speech like without actually being able to shoot anyone back. And yeah, I so like what I liked about the campaign was that it was a little bit more personal, mm -hmm. and I think I like that it followed mostly one character and just kind of their tour of duty. Uh, and where a lot of other campaigns will kind of take a bigger scope or like have one big super villain. This one was more personal and there's a lot of play about the tension of war and mm. between a squad and like what that means and duties and responsibility and following orders. The protagonist is a really, right now, yeah. really young campaign. guy, right? Yeah, yeah. So he seems maybe out of college or high school. It's not really explained and you can't tell them their faces. Yeah. But uh, obviously very young, just fresh on the war and like the first thing you do is D-Day and the first scene mm. is brutal. I've heard that. I've, I've seen that on Twitter. Yeah. A lot of people being like, it's it was so, it was really full on. Yeah, yeah. They, they, it does keep up that gore even though sometimes some big action moments are a little at odds with what it tries to do tonally, which mm. is also wrote in my review. Like there's this one scene where you're in a church and you have to get out of it exploding. And, oh, it's easy. Uh, and, oh, I saw that behind closed doors at E3. Yeah, and yeah. it's like a bell is kind of chasing you through the church. It's like, okay, this is a little silly. Like it felt yeah. a little too... Cartoony, video yeah. gamey. Yeah, for like what they're trying to go for. But for the most part, it is really consistent. And there's some like neat... Oh, <laughs> hello. Um, there are some neat objectives where you get to play as other characters too that oh, I really that's cool. liked that kind of showcases different parts of the war. How long is the campaign? Uh, I think it took me about five hours to get the that. Usual okay. The usual call. Call. Yeah. It's not super long, but I think yeah. that's just kind of what it needed to tell its story and be done. Yeah, so I'm oh, cool with that. I, yeah. I, that. That's music to my ears because like, I don't need a 20 hour game. Yeah, no. A nice, solid. I hate five that I'm hours. at that point now. Like, Wolfenstein, I think, ended up being like 13 hours. That's, our, our reviewer, Dan Stapleton, said it took him about 14. And yeah. Yeah, I finally played the first hour last night. Yeah. And it, it's, it's awesome. It's, Can't wait and it's more. consistently good. Like, yeah. I yeah. like that game so much. I want everyone to buy it. This will be like my this year's Dishonored 2. Like, please just buy Wolfenstein. But uh, yeah, I was like, man. This really has taken a while, and I'm also still haven't finished South Park All the Evil Within Two, which also seriously, Lucy, that game's so long. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's taking me such a long time. I know for three or four days of of of, the, 
October. That was my yeah, life. Yeah, it's like, crazy. It was just my life playing Evil Within 2. Yeah. Um, to the point- I like it though. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I scored an, an eight, so I liked it too. Um, but yeah, horror games are quite hard to play uh, just In quick sort discussion. of relentlessly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, there's, it's all about tone, tonal shifts and, and little jarring sort of moments. You need a break from that. It's probably you exhausting. Do a, you do yeah. need a, a, a break. You're not meant to play them for that duration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although yeah. I will say, you know, we are at November and I, I think we're sort of coming to the tail end of, of, of the sort of big horror games. My horror game of the year uh, is still Outlast 2. I don't know oh, if you guys I have barely played it. played it. That that was the most harrowing. I thought it was really cliche, like in the opening. Right. Stick with it. Okay. <laughs> that was the most harrowing uh, horror experience I've had all year. Wow. Mm. Um, it was just, it was, by the end, I was like a, a shell of a human being. Damn. Wow. Um, so, yeah, if you're into horror, please play Outlast 2. The Evil Within 2 is great as well, but yeah. Outlast also, Friday the 13th, technically Little Nightmares is a horror game, and then Resident Evil 7. Like, it's been a pretty good year for It that. has and been a good year. a lot more coming in 2018, yeah. too. I mean, there's, there's no shortage of horror games, especially, you know, that, that's... I would say one out of every three VR games that I hear about oh, is this a horror game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's such an easy that makes sell. Sense. It's such an, exactly, yeah. it's such an easy sell. It's pretty much the only reason I'd put on a VR headset these <laughs> days is for a horror game. Mm, I hate it. All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they were saying that they wanted zombies this time around to be scarier too. Um, oh, interesting. Which I can confirm it is not that scary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I can handle it, it's fine. Yeah. So there are some like mild jump scares and it definitely is more gory and like a, intense setting as opposed to like zombies in space land with the last game but yeah there's a guy who already like prestiged five times and got the new kill streak thing. oh yeah i saw that i was just like what it's insane it's I'm a guy called uh it's pwnstars.com and you can find him on twitch <gasps> but it, it's just crazy that someone already managed to do that yeah i've prestiged some things i haven't actually prestiged my character yet because i haven't been trying to do that yeah like there are definitely ways you can grind to get xp mm -hmm. but I'm, of course, for the review, we need to play everything. I'm not yeah. just focusing on that. Um, one of the ways to do that is actually through the war mode, which is a new multiplayer mode. That yeah, I awesome. I liked war mode a lot yeah. when I played it at E3. That's mm -hmm. right. It was uh, yeah, it was really good. And what is that? So it is a multi objective based mission it's where like a tug of war thing. Yeah. So right. like one team is on offense, one team is on defense. So you played either the allied or axe powers, and then you have to just capture or. T you, three or four objectives. Some of them are captured. Some of them are like just defending. Some of Blow them up a bridge. are blowing up a bridge. Okay. No, are building a bridge. Build, blowing that's up a right, bridge. That's right. There's like refueling tanks and like just all these other little different tasks depending on the map you're playing. It's interesting. Uh, the one, even though I really, really like this mode because you also get to play both sides. So after the first round, you switch sides mm -hmm. and so you get to do both objectives. Um, I really liked it, but one map I just hate so much. And it's uh, Operation Neptune, I believe, which is essentially D-Day, mm -hmm. but like you have to storm the beach and you know try to take bunkers, and then you have to go take down some communication things, and then I think disable some guns if you're on the Ally powers. And storming the beach is the worst if yeah. you're if the enemy team has a good sniper and good people who know how to take cover, and your team doesn't have a sniper, you just get mowed down on the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, have. that's really what happened it was, in that wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it was, it's like a less <laughs> so interesting- it in I video know. game terms. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. Something the beach is the, yeah, no, yeah. it's pretty bad. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Um, a lot of people died. <laughs> yeah, so, but in context of the game, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. weird because you're playing that, and like it's already in the campaign. And well, the is that the map kind of designed against you because it's really hard? Sometimes, like, you can totally do it. Like, there's times when we just overtook the enemy, like, so easy. It was really easy. But then other times when you just get pinned down, yeah, it felt unfair. And then we had to play that same team again with opposite sides. They just, like, crushed us anyway. So that's yeah. like, also a downside. But yeah. it's a small price to pay to, like, guarantee you're playing both roles. That is true. Because then if you're playing on both sides, you're playing against the same team. So if it's someone way yeah. better than you, they just continue to be way better. How long is a match? Uh, it depends how long you take to Did fail or complete. Yeah, they can the be pretty long, as, yeah. I, and, as I remember. Yeah, actually. so you get actually a lot of XP for that, too. And, but, and I don't say that in a complainy way. No, yeah, like that's, I think, a draw to it is that you're playing to these objectives and it takes more time. And you're I think strate mm. strategizing with your team, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And if not, you can just play by yourself. That was fine, too. Cool. It's fine. Um, one important thing I do want to note that I didn't write about my review is that it doesn't take, it doesn't count your KDR at all. Oh. For mm. war. So it's like very much 
please just pull the appointment. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because I know a lot that's of people good for are, someone like me. Get on that's the payroll. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, like people yeah. are really concerned about that. And I am concerned about that. And like not having to worry about that in a mode like that is just, I think it makes it a little bit more fun. Yeah, that's you great. just get to focus on like being, working as a team. And like if you die trying to get subjective, it's fine. I've always War gotten, games should be like absolutely. I've always gotten so frustrated in Gears of War trying to capture points and having nobody help me because they're trying to get their Because they just want to get kills. And like, yeah, they're too concerned too. Yeah. with their KDR. And it's like, it's infuriating. It, but please help me. <laughs> yeah, we're bored of your lone wolf antics. Yeah. yeah. Just please get on the payload. Yeah. yeah. Just there's, Modes for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. The Really, one, is it just one more major fall release, Battlefront, Battlefront 2? Um, that's, that's the last one now that... Uh, I think so. Yeah. My brain is mush at this uh, point. Yeah. After there, Mario and COD. So yeah. Just, there are no uh, no December releases this year. We'd seen the last few years that looked like it was going to be a Well, thing. we've got PUBG. That's Maybe. true. All right. I mean, that's... Doesn't game really preview, count, but yeah. it still it still counts. It's a new thing that you can play, so. and it's going to be a big deal. I think. Yes, um, that's true. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's still a bunch of indies coming out. Like Hello Neighbor is finally coming to Xbox in December, which I'm really excited about. That was delayed from August, mm -hmm. um, but I think that game is awesome, and I'm really excited about that. But yeah, you're right. It's like of major ones. The last yeah. one is is Battlefront Two, which is what the 16th? 17th? 17th? Yes, I believe. I believe that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Well, there's been plenty out to keep all of us busy. Oh yeah, yeah. I have Absolutely. so much to catch up. It's been on. a good year. Been Absolutely. a lot of games. So, uh, been a good year. How about the future? Phil Spencer talked to Bloomberg. Uh, sort of, you know, it's Bloomberg, so it's more of a financial tilt to the uh, to the information. It's not he's not talking to me, for instance. But he he Phil did address the first party situation, and he said to Bloomberg, "quote We need to grow, and I look forward to doing that. Our ability to go create content has to be one of our strengths. We haven't always invested at the same level." We've gone through ups and downs in the investment. Uh, before I get to the second part of his his quote, I wanted to talk about that because it's, you know, he's. I feel like the timing of this is uh, not a coincidence. Like it's that they, they he, he I don't I feel like he would not have said this publicly a month ago unless when, they had something to yeah. say when they're uh, trying to push this guy right here, yeah. the Xbox One X. But now that it's that's sort of done and they're it's a, it's a successful launch. Uh, I feel like now it's, I feel like now, you know, Phil came in and he, he told us, you know, backward compatibility was one of the first big initiatives that he, he, uh, initiated that's done or more, you know, there'll be more games. I mean, added, they've done a great job with that. We'll talk oh, about yeah. a few more here in a second, but you know, that's, that's all rolling. Uh, the S is out that sort of, the S kind of helped visually move past the, the original Xbox and and you know the rough start it had by saying no it's a whole new box it's great mm, it's, yeah. you know and now the X being okay most powerful console on the market now I feel like the next thing on Phil's to do list this is what I'm interpreting from this is okay exclusives I'm gonna f focus on the first party situation because that's really it's arguably Microsoft's last weakness I use with with some air quotes it's absolutely it's last uh, last weakness and. Um I wish that the X had launched alongside uh, stronger games than mm -hmm. it did. Super Lucky's Tale didn't Super do Lucky's it for Tale. you. <laughs> and like I know Forza looks Says beautiful, the guy that reviewed it. but everyone is like, "Oh, look, look how great Forza looks!" And it's like, "Yeah, we get it, but there's a Forza every year." Yeah, and, and that's, that's you know, always the point. He's like, "Look how great it looks." Yeah, yeah, and, and I and I, it plays I, great too. But yeah. you know, car games are it's a niche. They don't still. appeal to everyone. They don't yeah. appeal to everyone. And I mean, and Forza Horizon Three would have been a great launch. Yeah, that appeals yeah. more to everyone than yeah. motorsport does for sure. I just wish that because um, it really does feel like the whole it's the most powerful console in the world. That is such a selling point. And people are going to want to go, okay, maybe I want an Xbox. And then, you know, they're going to look at the games that sort of have launched alongside it, I suppose, new games. And, yeah, Super Lucky's Tale. I yeah. just don't get it. If well, I, I, just I mean, wish... the Assassin's Creed Origins partnership, too. But aside from that, what are the launch titles? Crackdown really? was supposed oh, to be Oh, you're that, right, it was. And, yeah, and, it was. And, you know, oh, that's not to right. say, you know, we, we, we can't say for sure how that would have turned out because... It got the lukewarm reception at E3, even from just a purely visual standpoint. Like, yeah. it wasn't looking like a, a, an Xbox One X showcase kind of thing. But who knows how, you know, if they had shipped it. But, but that, you know, that was going to be their game. Yeah, and then about it that. didn't pan out. They delayed yeah. the game. Yeah, it's still just, it, I, I still struggle with this idea that we've been gifted this incredible console. 
yet, like, for what reason? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so some games can look a bit better. So that way, when I play Fusion Frenzy with all my friends, it's going to be a brilliant experience. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it back the clock, that OG Xbox <laughs> backward compatibility. I mean, and, the, yeah. the thing is him saying this right now, I wonder if that means that they actually are, you know, it takes it three years to make a game. Of like, course. is he saying this At right least. now because they yeah. do have games to announce next year that I have sure been being so. worked on for and, years? And that was, that was sort of the Twitter response to this was, what well, we were talking off air before we started, like, a quote like this, like, it's, it's nice to see Phil kind of like publicly acknowledge it, but it's a no-win situation for him because if if uh, you get people saying, "Oh, well, why didn't weren't you doing that three years ago?" and we won't see the things you're talking about for three or yeah. four years, but then if he goes out and spends money on partnerships, which Phil has actually publicly said he's not super interested in mm -hmm. doing, it's oh, well, you just bought your exclusive, so it's a yeah. very much a, a no-win situation for Phil, and and so I want to defend him on that regard, but also at the same time not defend him in the sense that, I mean, they, he did, this is the, this is the, they're reaping what they've sown here. Mm -hmm. How many you know. Xbox exclusives were there this year? Uh, well, mm -hmm. that depends on. Timed exclusive. Well, but, but exclusive. no, no, actually where I was going with that is because technically you count uh, the, the 4K enabled rehash that you can play with a controller instead of just connect of Disneyland Adventures and yeah. Pixar Rush. So if you don't count that stuff, it's basically Halo Wars 2, Cuphead. It's a good one though. Forza Motorsport 7 and Super, yeah, Lucky's, Super Tale. Lucky's Tale. So it's sort of <laughs> four games. Uh, and I think the, the difference is, you know, Sony, in fact, when you're when you're playing the inevitable head-to-head -head comparison game. Sony didn't have a ton of first-party games this year either. They really didn't. They, had, they had one they really had great one. Horizon, which yeah. was great. Gran Turismo, which was very good as well. That did Not quite uh, Neo, Forza level. Neo, Gravity Persona. Rush. Persona. The third, Gravity that's Rush the thing. Third party, but the third party th exclusives filled it in. And You're right. It's yeah. What Lucy's alluding to is the quality was overall higher than... the Because, you know, Halo Wars 2 was... was Good. I mean, I think well, Cuphead and Forza Cuphead's are very great. good. Yeah, Forza's great, but uh, Halo War is good, and Super Lucky's Tale not good. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it makes it when you when there are only the four, it makes it look worse when two yeah. of them are yeah. not. You know, super. But at the standard. same time, I'm never going to stop being excited about Microsoft having Rare. Like that's a studio that I just love and continue yeah. to love, mm -hmm. and I'm excited about Sea of Thieves. I played the alpha again this weekend. Yeah. Like I, I'm never going to stop being stoked about that. And the fact that they still own Fable is a huge deal to me. But obviously, we want new IPs. But you're just picking at a scab right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I have to bring it up every time. Aww. But yeah, I'm I'm also really excited about State of Decay. But uh, I do oh, I do think it's too. it's good for Spencer to finally kind of. Or we always talk him Phil, call him Phil. It's funny seeing it written as Spencer. But mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good to see him finally talking about it. And yeah, hopefully next year's E3 is a big one. And I, I that's I'm glad you brought that up because I, Phil has talked about how they they don't like to announce games super early, which I know of course some people take as a shot at Sony because they do that. But no, it's you know he he likes to keep it you know keep a tighter window on it so that I guess the hype doesn't. I mean, Nintendo does a great job of that too. I mean, the yeah, everyone true, but would prefer that anyway. Like, I'd rather just assume that they're developing a lot of yeah. great games. And the way and Bethesda does it is yeah. just ugh. But now, that that said, there is an opinion to be had, and I, I actually am of this opinion that mm -hmm. I think 2018 specifically. Ryan, the dog is moving. I know. Dog just moves. Oh, <laughs> so we have movement. We have movement. <laughs> I think that E3 2018 specifically, Phil needs to kind of. Uh, wave that policy a little bit. I think this is they are they are at their lowest point as far as the 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 perception which becomes the reality. I mean, I think the X has helped situation. the perception. Oh, you mean in terms of, of the first parties. so of, meaning yeah. I, I think at E3 next year, I think they need to announce some farther out stuff just to show everyone, "Hey, look, we're on top of this." She's snoring. She's, snoring. she's doing puppy snores. <laughs> <gasps> I'm dying. Oh my this God. is a good day. I have oh no idea. If what a great day. Through, but, um, yeah, I, I, no, I agree, Ryan. I think that um, next year Microsoft has to come in swinging with the hype. Yeah, I agree. Instead of like, yeah. we're going to be the voice the of reason right. and the grounded ones and the ones you can always rely on. Yeah. I think that they need to come in with the like the stream is falling games. in from the ceiling. Yeah. And yeah. Like, or 2020 yeah. games. Exactly. So yeah. I do worry a little bit about that because if I – 
just like looking back at when they announced things earlier, like with Halo and what we got versus what it turned out. Like, I guess with Halo 5, when, remember when they announced it? And it was the, just the, so yep, different. The Data desert sack. cloak thing yeah. that never made it into the game. Yeah. Like but so much has changed. It was, I guess happens. It but. was a kick-ass trailer. Yeah. It was a good. They didn't yeah. actually put it. A t- they didn't call that a Halo 5 Guardians trailer. Right. So like it was just full of mystery. Yeah. And like, I guess maybe doing that, that would be a nice teaser. Yes. I just worry about when you adva- you announce things so far in advance when you're not really ready to show it um, and you have that pressure. Yeah. And I don't think they'll do that too much. Like, thanks. you know, it's not going to be a Death Stranding situation where that game clearly doesn't uh-huh. exist yet. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I don't, I'm <laughs> still figuring it is out. It's a concept real. Yeah. yeah. We'll just keep making short films for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I'm super excited about that game, but we're not going to yeah. get it for like five years. But um, no, I think that they probably won't. They won't push it too far. Like they've pre- been pretty good about that, but I think you're right in that we we should maybe see some stuff that's not coming out until 2019 or 2020 at this point. Yeah, I think they've got to dip into the well a little bit just to stem the the tide of of their fan base's frustration. Well, it was funny doing the Xbox One X stream that we did yesterday. People like seeing what the games look like on the X. Mm-hmm. Like going into that stream, they were like, "Console is garbage," and then by the end of the stream, they were like. There's no games. So they just like <laughs> rescinded to the same thing. They were like, damn right. it, console was good. No games though. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just very funny watching people figure out how they could still get that console was in there. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Uh, so buried at the bottom of this Bloomberg story uh, was this. But Microsoft will probably debut a streaming service that doesn't require a console for some types of content in the next three years, Spencer said. So they're Phil did say this. They're not directly quoting him, but they're they're paraphrasing him. A 2012 trial of such a service inside the company was too costly and never made it to the market. But Microsoft's progress in Azure cloud services over the past few years is changing the economics and quality level, Phil, Phil said. Mm. What is he talking about? I have mm. no idea because as soon as he said that you don't you don't need a console for it, what does that mean? Like, well, we had spoken about before if maybe Game Pass would end up being like a Netflix streaming system kind of thing, yeah. but this to me sounds like it's unrelated to games at all. That's what that's what I'm saying. It, just, yeah. it sounds like he's talking about some sort of a Netflix type. Yeah. Like, Except, remember the Halo movie? <laughs> yeah, Except for the part where Phil is in charge of the Xbox division. That's right. Like, True. So why he, oh, yeah, why, I mean, right. why, why would he be the one to make that announcement at all? Like would it be maybe well, like classic titles that they're just bringing back for a Could be for off? the cross-platform play situation, like the Play Anywhere. Like it could be for PC for all titles or that you can stream. Tablets and phones kind of thing. Could be. Oh, gosh. I but maybe you can play original Xbox that. games on PC or something. Like I don't... This is interesting. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't... I, it's like I want another hint. What does it another mean? Another hint, please. Yeah. yeah. One I don't more, understand. Yeah. Huh. It will be interesting to see what the heck Phil is talking about. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like that would be a thing that won't be at E3 because it's doesn't it's it probably won't serve the hardcore Maybe audience. Maybe CES or something. Hey, Daisy. Hello. Hello. Uh, so keep an eye on that. I guess that's uh, it's a strange sort of out of left field thing that Phil just dropped on us in that Bloomberg mm-hmm. story. Uh, more concretely, you'll recall that uh, we actually revealed the first four Xbox One X enhanced 360 games: Halo 3, Oblivion, Fallout. Three and uh, the original Assassin's Creed. Three more are on the way, and they are Mirror's Edge, yes, good game. Skate Three, also a good game, and Gears of War Three, also a good game. Fantastic. Really curious to see, especially what Mirror's Edge looks like. Well, I just saw a, yeah. s- a screenshot. Yeah, like, that's I, what I, I all I saw was a screenshot, and it looked amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it looked ridiculous. I cannot. Yeah, like, I'm really stoked about Skate. <laughs> uh, everybody is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Skate is skate's like the what's what, I'm trying to think of what a what like the TV or movie it's like the Arrested Development it of, dies too yeah. slow of video yeah. games where yeah everybody like it was this cult beloved thing and everybody misses it and wants it to come back yeah like it died too soon yeah that's 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 it it just you know it was such a popular series and everyone loved it and then it just was like no no more whereas Tony Hawk Still got those. Just ran out of gas. Oh, Still got those. Talk about remember American just remember the old days. Oh my <laughs> god! Like talk about like dragging Bug a dead horse and, through yeah. a desert. Yeah. And then off a cliff. And then off a cliff. Like Thelma and Louise style. Yeah. <laughs> That's also funny without the context of video games because it sounds like you're blaming Tony Hawk the human. You're like, <laughs> and then Tony Hawk just dragged a dead horse through the desert and. We've always we've always got this gag. My um my Tristan Ogilvy, my colleague from the Australian office, we've always got this gag whenever we're talking about um. 
we like when we don't know what someone's going to reveal at E3, like mm -hmm. when a publisher just doesn't seem to have anything to show. And we sort of think, oh, well, maybe they'll just bring Tony Hawk across the stage. <laughs> Tony Hawk, everyone! And he just goes slowly across the stage on a skateboard to that... <laughs> and I just want that and to happen in one year. Uh, and that's it. I, I, can, just, I can see that at like the Square Enix conference. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can and, see a lot um, of things got happening. Not, uh, Tony Hawk, everyone! Yeah. I like that a lot. He's it's become such a weird mainstay of the video game industry. Yeah, he has. What I, I will strange. say in defense of Tony Hawk, though, uh, is at my first or second E3, so 2003 or 2004, I was doing a behind-closed-doors demo uh, of whatever that year's Tony Hawk game was. And Tony was in the room giving the demo, answering like he was actively. Oh. He wasn't just like cashing. Doing check no, the, the guy has passion like, for it. That's into why. It. That's why he does do appearances at E3 yeah. and yeah. stuff mm. like that because he wants to because he loves it and he believes in it. It's just that <laughs> so many games. There's so many games. So many games. And Tony Hawk Ride did exist. Yeah, that's <laughs> and a lot for of that. Games. I will never forgive him. Oh. They also remade the first one, and it was not great. That might have been. At, let's. We could probably pin the ride thing on Activision, though. I uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. I'll put it this way: I never got a demo of Tony Hawk Ride from Tony. That was from, <laughs> that was yeah. from other people. So probably didn't want to show that one. I don't know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I had to send my. I was reviewing for another outlet back then, and I had to send my board back. Well, I heard those boards are so low. Oh wow! Yeah. They asked for it. Back. They asked for <laughs> it back. back. I was like, you can have it. Actually, they wow. probably wanted to destroy them all to eliminate any evidence that it ever existed. Well, I was going to say, I heard those boards are very expensive resale value now because they're considered to be rare. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Imagine the type of... God help anyone who decides to spend their money. I know. Yeah. Exactly. Clap uh, stuffs. Also, uh, she might, Daisy might need to be here every week because I'm just very, I'm it's great. very comforted right now. I'm very now. calm. Yes. It's That's, really nice. I feel better about my life. I'm being, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm being therapy dogged right now. Yeah. And she's you not are, even yeah. a therapy she's dog just, yet. And she's just sleeping? Sleeping yeah. and precious. Yeah. Look at those no, paws. <laughs> I feel very good about Wonderful. this. Me too. Uh, all right. From calm to violent, the UFC. EA is doing another UFC game, UFC three, very good and it's they've announced it this week, and it's out very soon, February second. That's uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, UFC yeah. three will feature a new fighter animation system with over five thousand new animations captured and rebuilt from the ground up. Mm. According to EA, the new tech brings quote uninterrupted fighter movement to the game. I think that's code for better animation. Uh, you're seeing the announced trailer for it right now. If you're watching on video, These boys look angry. Uh, meaning <laughs> fighter boys, uh, yeah. fluid <laughs> footwork and seamless combinations. Strikes can now also be combined with slips and lunges so that every move can be performed while in motion and position and stance now has an even greater effect on the impact of every strike. And there is a GOAT career mode that would be greatest of all time, not... Eh, eh, not <laughs> no GOATs? No actual GOATs. Oh, dang. But, yeah, you know, this is a series that... It's not quite attained... Certainly the critical acclaim. It must be selling well enough that they're doing a third one. But because this was this was the series that that EA uh, gave up on Fight Night for. I love yeah. Fight Night. Which for, <laughs> yeah. business wise makes perfect sense. Yeah. UFC is far more marketable uh, these days than boxing is. You've got people like Ronda Rousey and exactly. famous people that you can actually yeah. put on the cover. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, the yeah the. the Superstar roster, for yeah. lack of a better term, I know it's a WWE thing, but much, much deeper than than in the boxing world. But mm -hmm. it was just, you know, I know for me, that was great though. That's yeah, the, exactly right. Fight night was so. And good. I say that as someone who has zero interest in boxing, me I just too. Really liked playing Fight Night. I, <laughs> yep. I remember <laughs> when the demo of Fight Night Round Three dropped for 360 at, I believe it was during CES because that was back when Microsoft was still doing things at CES. Mm -hmm. CES 2000. Six, two months after the 360 had come out. So you had the launch games and then uh, Oblivion and Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter mm -hmm. hadn't come out yet. Those came out in March. And in January, the demo for Fight Night Round 3 drops and it's stunning. Mm -hmm. like, it is just this the most next generation thing you've ever seen to that so point. So just really good co-op games. Yeah, just beating the crap out of a friend. Yes, and it, that's the thing. It played great. The control scheme was amazing, and you could yeah, you I, could play dirty as well. Yep, you and could, they were just the game was just like, all right, you just, all right, <laughs> yeah, you do you. You're, I'm with you. I, I completely fell in love with the Fight Night series, even though I had no, I don't watch boxing. I don't. Care I didn't about know boxing. any of the people, but I was just yeah. like, I like this game a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then Round Four was great. And I then didn't play was, Round Four. Uh, Champion was the last one. 
Can you guys correct me if I'm wrong? Because I don't, I don't really pay attention to fight the fighting game sort of scene at all. But was the UFC series the one that became quite infamous for having hilarious glitches? Like I remember there was a sort of I don't I remember, I remember what you're talking video. about, but I don't remember which one it was. Oh maybe oh wait now I I'm, know I'm now yeah, someone made some compilation video that went viral, right? Uh, yeah, but I, they were incredible. Yeah, you know what? Uh, including, there, wasn't there like Joe Rogan commentary? It was Joe was, Rogan commentary. I <laughs> believe, Like Joe yeah. Rogan style commentary. That might have been, maybe that was the first one of these. Right, I believe it might have been the first one. <laughs> and it was just, it was, I mean, I just thank the series for existing just for those. <laughs> just for that. Because <laughs> I, I that. honestly, like, I was in that kind of, like, heaving, can't breathe, laugh. Very good. So good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously with all this fluidity and they really want to unbroken that. fighter movement, Physics you know, they, they, people yeah. will find a way to break it. <laughs> 5,000 new animations. 5,000 5, new animations. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, keep an eye out on that. If you are a UFC fan, you've got uh, one of your first 2018 games to uh, to that has a definitive release date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got a possible Borderlands 3 hint as far as timing this game this is like the worst kept secret in games um it, it's announced but not announced and this is from strauss zelnick the ceo of take two on their last uh, fiscal thingy he says looking ahead we expect fiscal 2019 to be a record year for net bookings and net cash provided by operating activities, blah, 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 financial speak, led by the upcoming launches of Rockstar Games' Red Dead Redemption 2 and a highly anticipated new title from one of 2K's biggest franchises. So to put that uh, a timeline on that, a real-life timeline, fiscal 2019 for them means April 1st, 2018 through March 31st, 2019. That's a lot um, of time. So yeah. we know... The spring 2018 release date for Red Dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that doesn't mean Whatever March that now. Whatever means. Because March, spring technically starts on, what, March 21st? Yeah. So uh, it's not the last week of March. <laughs> Sometime April or after, but uh, I mean, it, d most people seem to suspect that he was talking about Borderlands 3 yeah. here because it has been danced around. And, you know, I had Randy Pitchford in here on Unfiltered talking a little bit about it. But uh, the thought I had was, what about Bioshock? Bioshock? That's exactly what I was going right? to say. I think Bioshock's way more likely. Like really? especially, yeah, like right now they have sent a whole bunch of us in the office these 10th anniversary. That's the thing. Like and they're just like the, pushing right. it. Like the interest, they're trying to drum the They've interest back. They've sent so many of us these collector's editions and I'm like, it's not even the 10th anniversary. That was like several months ago. Like That's what? really weird. I mean, for, for me, like from a business perspective, that wouldn't make a huge amount of sense to me. Like, I know everyone loved Bioshock, but we're at this time right now where single-person shooters just are not selling. So, side note is that Strauss, I think on the same call, uh, also said, and I don't want to, um, this is a paraphrase, I don't remember his exact quote, uh, that every single Take-Two published game or every single Take-Two game going forward will have... Microtransactions. Yeah, he but the way he phrased it was way. like... Uh, Earnings dumb, opportunities for consumers, yeah. like a, it was like it was phrased in, guy way. but one hundred percent, he said every single game they yeah. ship going forward is going to have micro. That is an accurate right. paraphrase. Yeah, I mean, that in, which is going to include Red Dead as well. We don't know what that means. But well, yeah. Red Dead, the Red Dead Online will just. That's do what I think. We're gonna have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I don't, I like also, you know, from a personal selfish perspective, I don't want another Bioshock, um, and I especially don't want another Bioshock Two scenario where they kind of shoehorn in some sort of a multiplayer yeah. angle. And I know that these days, you. Know, that's not really the way that they do it. It's more like uh, like a Destiny style where you can – it's a shared universe and that sort of thing. Um, but I don't want that in Bioshock. Bioshock is a single-player experience. I would yeah. definitely want it to be a single-player experience. And that said, like for that reason, I would prefer to have Bioshock than Borderlands if it were a single-player experience because I've always found Borderlands incredibly boring unless I'm playing with a friend. Borderlands is, yeah. to Lucy's point though, Borderlands is way more – Business monetizable likely, absolutely. It's so much more monetizable. It's more likely, for is. sure. You're absolutely right. Like, I just don't think there's any real space for a new single-player Bioshock right now. God, yeah, I hope the, you're wrong. I, I know, I know. Yeah. And I, like, I know that that is a terrible thing to say, but it's it's like, if they do push one out, I just don't think it's going to be in the form that we want. Yeah, I think the Probably only right. way I'd want to see Bioshock come back is with Telltale. 
like before Rapture Falls, like some crazy thing during the fall of Rapture. Yeah. Oh, I know there's some. We'll bad get news to that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. I don't Foreshadow. Know. I would really like another Bioshock, but yeah, it's really it's, it, you just depressed me but brutally. Who? <laughs> so I'm sad. Who, who do you? Who makes oh. Bioshock? Well, you know, we've heard stuff in the rumor mill that the people are working on Bioshock yeah. from devs. That it's like off the record and unofficial, but like we've been told that people are working on it, and like no, don't know what it sense. means exactly. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that, I don't, that kind of stuff comes around a lot. Even if first-person shooter story-driven campaigns are just not that big. I just don't see them giving up Bioshock ever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just too too big. Also, on the note of single-player shooter campaigns, please buy Wolfenstein 2 the new Colossus. Thank (laughs) you. Support that game. I second that. It's amazing. I think that might have been my second time saying that people are going to accuse me of being paid off, but play that game. Well, Well, you're not paid off, so. (laughs) If I had a dollar for every time someone said we were paid off, you'd you'd have more money than, than they think you've been paid off for. Yeah, it's funny. No, yeah, no. it's you should maybe maybe just buy even if you don't even want to play. If you like <laughs> single player shooters, well, I buy, actually buy had this conversation anyway. With they were like, "It's a sixty dollar it. game, and I don't have a lot of money right now." And it's like, "That's fine, but you should look at it as an investment in the future of single player games yep. that don't have any online component or microtransactions." And single player games that are incredibly story driven, yeah. and because f- that that story, that voice acting, oh, it's incredible, is, and all is, the characters are great. It's funny. It's sad. Like it's just a very good game. Yeah. So, quick question. If I, for some reason, had not played the first or previous Wolfensteins, yeah. could I play this one? I think that playing the new order would make the new Colossus better. better. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot. Of, yeah. Because you, you really... That, you can do it without it. It's Yeah, there, there's cool. a really good character development in the first game with sort of you and your crew. Right. So you you wouldn't have any context for who they are in the second yeah. game. Yeah, so I, I think, think it would, would make that, sense. With that yeah. said, the new crew that they introduced gets way more of a uh, way more in the spotlight than the old crew. So okay. it's not necessarily like you're going to be like, I don't understand who these guys are, and I'm missing out on all these important story beats. Um, no, I, oh, yeah, dreaming. I don't think it'll do that at all. She's dreaming. But you should play the New Order because it's it's great. As yeah. Well. So I just yeah. asked because I've played part of New Order. Yeah. But I know a lot of people have asked too. It's like, could I play the New Wolfenstein without having played? You definitely games? could play it, but I would suggest playing the New Order first. But oh. you don't need to. All right. Uh, also in Take Two news, GTA Five. I feel like we've done this story so many times, and the number just keeps going up. GTA Five has shipped eighty-five million copies so that's not sold through but that is most of them are sold you know that's who know I, mean, I don't know was that that mean maybe 80 million sold i mean god knows it's it's a lot sold but 85 million of them which is unreal uh, according to take two and they are citing the npd here grand theft auto 5 is now the united states's best selling video game ever oh. in terms of units sold and revenue. It Includes weighed more digital. than Minecraft? Apparently. Wow. I, what was, uh, yeah. top was Wii Sports? Was the oh, highest we, that game? was probably really up there. That's so sweet. If it wasn't number one. Yeah. Talk about betting above your weight. Yeah, yeah but I mean, that was because it was bundled as well, so it was weird. Right. But, um, well, I, I wonder what the phrasing of you, the U.S. is. Like, if it were international, they that's would have said it. But maybe the mm-hmm. M- NPD only knows the U.S. Yeah, well, that that is accurate. That yeah. is what the NPD doesn't track. But they can't really do anything about yeah. it. But I'm, it's super impressive, and I'm also not remotely surprised. I'm not it's surprised a great at all. Um, so I work on Wiki's team, and GTA is always on our top of top pages just every month, that's every crazy. day, I would every like, week. I would yeah. like to also acknowledge Forever. the reality of games as service now, because yeah. so much of that is of its uh, longevity uh, is GTA because online. of GTA. There's still online. updating like constantly, like, uh, it's, almost it's, every week. Yeah, yeah, you know, and because well, I always think when I think GTA, I think, oh, it's a large single player experience in a you know sandbox. But no, there's this whole other. It's two games in one. Yeah, it is. there's this whole other aspect to it now that's just breathed new life into that series. Have you guys seen the GTA Online role playing? On Twitch, no. I hope it They're really awesome. good. Like they have servers you know, like set stories? up. For, yeah, for role playing. Cool. And there's like this one. I forget his name. Um, sorry. Uh, he's he role plays as a cop, and they have like these very set rules, and like you don't want to piss him off, but then you also kind of want to piss him off. Like, <laughs> wow. it's, it's within that's course, really context, cool. And yeah. like you have to get approved to be in the server. And Neat. You have to take on a role, and you can't like. It's just really interesting to see that like community that thrive out of. Well, this. it's interesting because a lot of the ways that they've 
added things to GTA 5 has been based on what they've seen people doing. Yeah. So they're like, oh, well, players did this, so let's just add that formally. Like skydiving like, activities. Yeah. And that kind of um, thing. They did that for the... Batmobile the, that we're seeing right now. <laughs> the gangsters thing. Um, I don't know what that DLC was called. I don't remember. But they basically had like gangsters in it, and so they added a sort of gangsters DLC. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we're watching been, the video right now. Yeah. This Batmobile is just soaring through the air. They've been incredibly smart um, with the way that they've sort of dealt with uh, online's massive success. I'm also mm. totally cool with it because it's a game that had a really, really good single player campaign yeah. that I still love to bits. Like, literally, and they one just of the, added on opinion, another one. One of the best games of all time, even without GTA Online. Yeah. I agree with that. And and like this is like the perfect partnership and I understand why they've supported it for so long. We never got the DLC they said they were going to make, but I also understand why now. Yeah. I understand why as well, but like as someone who traditionally always loved those DLCs, yeah. like it was a bit they of a were shame. really good. Yeah. Ballad of Gay Tony. Might really be good. So might good. be one of the best expansion packs for any game ever. Yeah. It's just so good. Um yeah, it's it's also really interesting. Uh it just I, the picture of Red Dead 2 is just becoming clearer and clearer. Yeah, Red Dead Online. Yeah, there we it's go. It's gonna be huge. I'm cool with it, man. How, who wouldn't want to do like you know they're gonna do some sort of old west version of the online heist? It's gonna yeah. be it, awesome. Oh, uh, like stage, you I know. Hope. It, you know <laughs> go I'm sure will assemble be, but I the hope. gang, steal the horses, rob you know, then go to the bank, rob the bank. Get to the train, hijack the train, get to the... Uh, I wonder how they're going to market it. Like when we actually get proper trailers and not tiny things, if they'll market it as like GTA Online, like Re Westworld, the video game. Like if, if they will market those two in tandem, whereas with GTA 5, the marketing was still a lot of like, here's these three characters that you play as in this mm -hmm. game. Like yeah. I wonder if they'll pay more attention to splitting that up. Yeah. The dog moved everyone. And made a tiny little sigh. She went... <laughs> <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so uh, if you... Don't already own GTA 5. Oh, forget it. You already Marty hasn't, GTA 5. Played, Marty hasn't played it. What? He He's garbage. Huh. He is. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. I have two copies. I do, too. I have two copies. Of, yeah, me, too. Yeah. The exact same thing. Go back for it. Yeah. Uh, me, too. Totally think, especially with <laughs> proper console generations seemingly getting a bit shorter. You know, mm. we're having, we're going, you know, more towards the smartphone route here. Uh, totally think that. The next, the GTA 6 is going to do the same thing where it's going to come in at the end of whatever this console generation is. They obviously is. did that on and purpose. The, I thought that was see, a little I, I, I actually would respectfully disagree. I don't think, I think Rockstar specific, Rockstar North, the development team, mm -hmm. who there's no way that Rockstar corporate screws with them ever because mm -hmm. they're the golden goose. I don't think they did it on purpose. I think it just serendipitously worked out that they... That it came out at the end of the generation, and, and then they were able to come in and. Man, and I totally think they did it on purpose, see, I, <laughs> especially I, because they didn't announce it. Because it was wasn't it just like a year later that they released it on Xbox One? One year later, exactly yeah. a year. It's like they, I totally think they knew they were yeah, like, we'll I, get people to buy it I now, just think, and then they'll buy it again in a year. See, I think Rockstar North is that they, they seem to me to be. Well, I don't think it would have been their call. Is the thing? No, but uh, I mean, I don't think they were like, let's release the game first at the end of the generation. I mean, it just happened to be, what, four years after GTA 4? Or yeah, five years? It, is, it was the know, right I, amount I think of it time. just kind of worked out, but I now I think it might. they might try they to They double sold. Like, why, yeah. would, why would a publisher not want to do that? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, Sony had success with that with The Last, Last of, of Us. Us. I actually wonder how many people will try to do that going forward now that those two games are the big ones. Guarantee it. it's going to happen. Yeah. You but will see it. also not Rockstar. So. Yeah, true. it's yeah. also Xbox's backwards compatibility program might render that kind and, of useless. And in uh, Rockstar's defense, for me, the uh, uh, oh, oh, it's fine. A cough. The new gen version was totally worth it because they added so much, including that entire crazy, like fully functioning first, first person, person mode. mode. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like they just. It wasn't cynical. Yeah, they, it's not like they went file save as. Yeah. And yeah, put it out there again. Totally new. <laughs> yes. What is it, Daisy? She picked a good time to nap. She'd been kind of wound up all day. Oh yeah, uh, and then she got on the table her. and just yeah, she nap. got yeah, she got like, all right. up by all the love. Yeah, yeah. cooler in here. Quiet. <laughs> yeah. uh, the final story this week is not one that I take any pleasure in reporting, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. and that is Telltale Games, who are just up, they were just across the Golden Gate Bridge to the north of us. They've laid off 25% of their staff, which amounts to approximately 90 people. It's 
crazy. Their statement is as such, quote, the decision is designed to make the company a leader in player-driven narrative gaming experiences with an emphasis on high quality uh, in the... Oh, wait, did I read that wrong? Let me start, let me no, start over. Right. <laughs> the decision is designed to make the company a leader in player-driven narrative games, more competitive as a developer and publisher of groundbreaking story-driven gaming experiences with an emphasis on high quality in the years ahead, which is obviously trying to put a brave face on it. Mm. Basically saying they overspent. Uh, seemingly. I mm -hmm. um, I, they say it won't affect their current slate, but I personally, this is just my own interpretation, I can't see how it won't. Um, I am now... Uh, I, my reading into this, again, based on only my own intuition, I'm thinking that maybe one of their major licensing deals fell through, either the awesome. Lionsgate thing or HBO but it's, it, that's or, the thing or is, uh, Skybound with Walking Dead. You think about Dead. the worst two of their selling franchises were Game of Thrones and Minecraft, two of the biggest franchises in the entire Wait, world. Wait, do we know that do we have sales figures for those to know yeah, that I they were? I believe that was what was spoken about, definitely for okay. Game of Thrones. I'm okay. not sure about Minecraft, but... Um, it's that had to have been an expensive licensing deal, oh, no and doubt. it absolutely no didn't doubt. pay off. And I think that that's them adjusting to this. It sucks for everyone involved, but people on Twitter have started a hashtag the games industry jobs to try and help everyone find other places of work. Yeah. Um, there are PR people who've been laid off as well, so it really yeah, sucks. I mean, suck. yeah, for, for, from sort of a more cynical perspective. Uh, I just sort of feel like Telltale spread itself too thin. Yeah, they have so well, many properties. Yeah. I think there's not really enough innovation there either. Yeah, and it just became, oh look, it's Telltale's new thing, and it, it, like it used to be a thrill. I remember when a Telltale um, series was announced, and yeah. now it's just like, oh well, it's predictable, and that's a real shame because they do great work. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and it's but and it is all about the writing with those games. Yeah, uh, you know the engine's been creaky for years, and people of gamers have complained about it. But ultimately, the stories have uh, most of them have been good. You know, I've been um, I'm waiting on Batman episode three, which mm -hmm. now I have no idea when. I mean, I presume that's the the Batman team was <clears throat> likely unaffected, given that uh, they're in the middle of a season and they probably have a deal with WB, and are, yeah. I would presume being. Funded in part by WB, who knows? Yeah, and we I, know that they develop them pretty much as they publish. Yeah, them. they're they're. It's and not like the, the day you none. get the code is the day they were finished. Yep. Yeah. 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 So so we'll see about Actually that. Baked. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, like I said, they they claim this will not affect their current slate, but remember they announced a Wolf Among Us season two, much to the delight of. Yeah. Uh, oh my heart. Because the Wolf Among I, Us was, uh, in my opinion, like their best. Yeah. It's, me too. I like, thought that down. Yeah, yeah. It's Tales. right there. And Tales from the Borderlands. Tales from the Borderlands, yeah. which was such an unexpected I, really yeah. game. So I, again, just me, I am no longer confident that I will ever see a second season of A Wolf Among Us. Uh, so given, sad. Given this news. But they announced it so recently. Like, wasn't that Things change. Games called? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Things if it, change. Yeah. If this just happened and they had to do it, then I could see as the, one of the first parts. I mean, put it this way. They announced in that, that, that day, uh, whenever that was a couple months ago, yeah. they announced A Wolf Among Us season two and they announced... The final season of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. If they're if they've just had a, a major layoff, major staff reduction, uh, which of those two, if they're cutting resources, do you think they're yeah, more likely it's to make? Wolf Among Us. It's the one. It's the, yeah, it's the uh, Wolf Walking Wolf Dead. It's the one that's going to get made. So your average person has not heard of the Wolf Among Us. Uh, Everyone's yeah. heard of The Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is also just coincidentally or not. I mean, it is, but it there are certainly threads to be compared here, but this is the second Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area studio disaster in the last month following mm -hmm. Visceral's closure. Yeah, uh, and I mean, uh, it affects people we know personally as well, it and it sucks. Um, I wish there was something we could do about it, but yeah, we really hope those talented people find work very I mean, quickly. It's, it's not clear people. that uh, the the high, high costs of the Bay Area factored into Telltale's decision, point. but it's certainly, it, whereas uh, in Jason Schreier from Kotaku's excellent report on, on visceral. Uh, visceral, those costs were a factor yeah. Yeah. of the Visceral closure, uh, because this is the, sorry New York, this is now, the, the we, this is the most expensive place in the country to Don't live. Don't know it. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> and yeah, so it's, you know, it couldn't have helped the Telltale situation there, as I said, they're 
just across the bridge in the North Bay, uh, still still as pricey as the rest of the Bay Area. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, best wishes to both the developers affected and their families yep. as well. That's uh, it's ninety people. That's a lot. A lot of talented people who are uh, who are looking for work. Fortunately, there are a lot. There are still a lot of developers here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. So and hopefully, like Ubisoft's just around the corner. Yep, Ubisoft's here. Crystal I, Dynamics is yep. here. I love driving I in every time I visit because mm-hmm. I always drive past Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah. And it's like that's my that's sort of like oh I know I'm I know where I am now because there's <laughs> Ubisoft. Yeah. They're like parallel to us pretty much. Just They're the street over the same, same street. Corner. We get their mail and they get our mail. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's that's what happens sometimes. They get yeah. our streets mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> Sully. Uh, so yes, uh, very sad news about mm-hmm. Telltale. We'll we'll keep an eye on what happens with them going forward. All right, marketplace report. We've got uh, if you've got money burning a hole in your pocket, here's what you can spend it on. I want to go to Lucy O'Brien. We are talking American dollars, not Australian <laughs> dollars. So this means nothing to <laughs> I mean, me. It's, just, it's all <laughs> it's all uh, could be anything. But yeah, uh, Lucy, what is out this week that we can spend our money on? Should All we right. so desire? So uh, retail, Need for Speed Payback, uh, Super Lucky's Tale uh, at 50 bucks. Worth it for Super Lucky's Wait, Tale? Wait, Super Lucky's Tale was Luck- 50 bucks? Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. I reviewed it and not a fan. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, it's definitely better than Bubsy the Woolly Strike Pack. Oh my gosh! I got an. Do you I got play this, that? Which is no, no, no. But just as an aside, I got an email the week that like all of those fantastic games dropped. It was like the trifecta of mm-hmm. like Wolfenstein, Assassin's October twenty seventh. Yeah, yeah, like Mario, and then I got an email that was like, "Hey Lucy, did you forget about me?" And it was like from the Bubsy, oh the no, Bobcat team. <laughs> And it was like, did you oh, not receive sorry. my LinkedIn? It's blah, not. Blah, blah. It's, uh, it's. They were always playing up the desperation. I was like, well, uh, you know, at least you've got an angle. Uh, I, I did actually write down. This didn't affect the review. This was just my mistake here. Uh, Super Lucky Tales, thirty dollars. Oh, okay. Oh, so my, my, my I was to say that seems yeah, pretty high for that. that. Um, Sonic Forces uh, is forty bucks. Not sent out for review. Not a good sign. Yeah. Wait, really? Still not. I don't think so. Damn. Uh, in the digital space, Assault Android Cactus <laughs> is 15 bucks now. If you guys have not played Assault Android Cactus, please get on it. It's a fantastic... Uh, it's Australian, right? It's Australian. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a sort of bullet hell. You Homer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's a bullet hell kind of um, crazy, intense uh, indie game, and it's really, really fun. Yeah. So I please play it. Packs, I think. I love the title of that game. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I want to know more about that game from the title. Even though I have no idea what it means, yeah. I want to know more. It almost looks like a Ratchet and Clank kind of thing. Like, huh. it's just, like, crazy, colorful, and uh, cool weapons, pretty I much. I like the character yeah. design. Yeah. Uh, the biggest uh, news of the day is Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> 20 bucks. Wheel of Fortune! Fortune. And Jeopardy is also twenty bucks. <laughs> uh, Steven Universe Save the Light at twenty five bucks. Ninety nine Vitas. What is that? I'm not sure what that is. Don't know. Uh, at nine ninety five and Mutant Football League, uh, which is in pre- preview. Game preview, preview program. Preview yeah, if you want to get in early on it. Uh, is twenty five bucks. I actually do want to play. Is pretty cool. The Steven Universe game. Oh yeah, I've played a little bit of it and yeah, I liked it a lot. Turn based. It's kind of similar to the mobile game because yeah. they had that one first, and this is essentially the sequel. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see how those differ since you know yeah. different systems. So. Yeah, it seems really cool. It was also written by the same person, and mm-hmm. um, is it Capybara that developed it? Actually, oh, I uh, think so. Yeah, yeah. which is right. which also is awesome. And yeah, awesome. Yeah. More reason to play it. Steven Universe colon not below. Yeah. No, don't say that. Not below. Gosh, I'm so I'm so sad. I'm holding out for yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get that game eventually. It'll happen. Will we? Maybe. If you believe, <laughs> if you believe enough, it can, anything can happen. I don't know about that, Miranda. That's that's just anime. Just, just leave Miranda me alone, okay? With yeah, that's Santa just Claus anime. Defense. That's I'm brutal. Trying, I'm just trying to keep brutal. hoping. If you believe for long enough, it'll happen. If you have that is definitely friends, anime. If you have enough friends. <laughs> With friends, we can do anything. <laughs> What's that line in the, the Dragon Ball Z theme song that's like, it's just the most cliche anime It's always ever. the power of friendship. Yeah, the power of friendship. Yeah. yeah. Everything. It's power mm. of friendship. Friends are nice, though. Yeah, but they can't get you below. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they can't. Unless they can just make it for me. That'd be great. Become friends with them. Uh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> just Im- imagine you sort of like, in, in you're sort of in a corner of your room playing your imaginary version of Below. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to will it into yeah, Friendship yeah, yeah. can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, a, a solitary tear. Yeah. 
I played it in my first E3 and just fell in oh, love. Oh, I didn't know you played it. Yeah, I played it. And I was just like, this is incredible. I don't want to put the controller down. Yeah. And no one else was behind me just getting to the demo. And it was a long demo. And so I was like, I'm just going to stay here until I have an appointment. That's awesome. And yeah. I did. No, well, that's even more brutal. I wish I could have just stayed played it. How long yeah. ago was that? Uh, 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 it for sure was at E3 2013. Yeah. Because that was the year. Because I, I wasn't here then. It but it, it was... I'm almost positive. That was the first one there. Because uh, when was the last time we heard about it? 2013 was 360 or Xbox it had One's been 2015. Announce here. Uh, I'm near positive it, it's it was at E3 back then. Yeah, but yeah, I think I put it in 2015. That's no, yeah, that's when I started. It, yeah, it was and it, it, it was at more than one E3. Don't when, get me when wrong. When was the last no, time sure, we heard about well, it? No, right? sure, that's when I played it. So. Uh, we lost you. We had the first the first 17 <laughs> minutes of it or so that Marty did as an IGN first feature for us, which might have been in 2015 at this Probably point. Probably when it was. It's insane. That's when I got to play mm. a lot of it, so. R.I.P. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, to the marketplace, uh, November's Games with Gold, uh, Trackmania oh. Turbo. Sweet girl. What did she do? She's looking up at me with such sympathetic eyes. <laughs> she is a dog. That's what she did. <laughs> She's just a dog. Um, that's coming November 1st to thirty. November 1 to November 30. Yeah. On Xbox One. On Xbox, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands, uh, November 16th uh, to December 15th. So good. So timing. good. Please play it's it. It's the if you whole series. Already. It's, yeah. The it's, whole series for free. That's Man, cool. I only got to play the first one, so I'm super it's excited. It's such good. an unexpectedly good game. I don't even like Borderlands. Yeah, yeah. like, that's the thing. Like as I love this series. The series game. is just totally different, even if you don't like Borderlands. Play. Yeah. Um, Nights into Dreams arrives uh, November 1st uh, to November 15th, and that's also on Xbox 360. I don't know what that is, but I like that. So that was the old uh, Sega... What, was that a a Dreamcast game? Or, like, they made a new one? I don't remember. It's like a older Sega thing that was, like, a, a major kind of cult classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Deadfall Adventures is arriving November 16th to November 30th, and that's also on Xbox 360. Fantastic. All right. All right. We, we kind of got to hurry the last segment of this so at least you can get out of here. Yes. Uh, we've neither Destin nor Marty. Excellent. So whatever. Uh, this is just for pride. I actually, <laughs> hey, I, I'm here. That's right. You, you actually can. I want to overtake Destin. Oh, you point. can tie You're Destin. Yeah. So there, are, there is something <laughs> yes. on the line here. So let's, let's do this. Uh, I didn't know the answer to this one. Let's see if any of you do. This is from a question comes to us from David in Mexico. Thanks so much, David, for writing in. He says, uh, very early in the Xbox 360 lifecycle, for some reason, one of the following games was released and remains a game with a total of only 970 gamer score instead of the standard 1,000. Which game was it? So one of these has only 970 achievement points to this day. Was it Condemned, Criminal Origins, which is Condemned 1, Lost Planet, 99 Nights, or Far Cry Instinct's Predator. Do I'm any of you happen C, to remember this? 99 Nights. Okay. okay. I don't even I didn't even know Far Cry Instinct's Predator was a game, so I'm just going to rule that one out. Uh it was not Lost Planet. I played both Condemned and 99 Nights. And I don't remember it being in either of them, but <laughs> I know that 99 Nights the achievements were really hard. It was the kind of like single player campaign that it would you'd get 5G for playing five hours. Mm. Um, whereas Condemned, I know had those achievements for like finding the dead birds and there was like a lot of collectible achievements that I built up and I don't remember ever getting a thousand G and that was back when I tried to get a thousand G. So I'm thinking it's Condemned. Okay. You going that way? I, Do you want me to come back to you? Yeah, come back to me. <laughs> All right, Miranda. I'm going to go with C, 99 okay. Nights. You guys both think it's 99 Nights? Because I like C. <laughs> I always, Have you so guys played default, that game? No. My uh, th- default, this is my poker face. Yeah. My, okay, so I'll just tell you guys. My default is C when I don't know what it is. So, oh. the, old, uh, the old guess oh, C no. on the yeah. multiple yeah. choice Going test? Yeah. All right. It's worked for me so oh, far. Oh, no. It's now gotten I feel you like this it's far. Change. Yeah. I don't think it's 99 Nights because I just, in my head, I'm like, I remember the game score being really hard. I know that I was trying to get 1,000G on that game, and I gave up. And my logic is like, I would remember... Being like, this game doesn't even have a thousand gamer score. If you believe in yourself, anything can happen. Shut up, Miranda! <laughs> you don't have time for your anime nonsense. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with Condemned. Okay. All right. I'm gonna All go right. with What's Condemned. Please answer? tell me it's not goddamn Lost Planet. Like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Condemned. Final answer. You're sure? No, not at all. Uh, are you locking in on that? Or are you? Are you? Gonna... Yeah. No, I'm locking in Condemned. Okay. Shut up, Ryan. <laughs> you shut up because you're right. <gasps> oh! <laughs> 
This is going to be so bad. Oh, my God. The mental backflips that I just oh. did in my own head. Yeah. We're so happy. Oh, man. Well done. Thank you. I'm impressed. I want to overtake yeah. Dustin so bad. You, you have tied him. So the rest of the year, which is show-wise is, I don't know, like five, like six shows maybe, something yeah. like that, max. Uh, I'd have to look, but... Oh, I'm that's... actually sweaty. I was <laughs> so nervous making that. Also, seriously, is Far Cry Instinct's Predator a game? One, I've never heard of that. Three, I've never heard four. of it. Me either. I think we... Five, maybe, yeah. I think six shows, probably. I think I'm going to be in most of those days. I'm not traveling Excellent. much more. All right. I think. Good. I say cool. now, and then what I'll end up traveling. What do you win if you win? Pride and a... And a and well, a... Marty's definitely going to win. But the thing is, Destin is generally the only one on the show who cares about winning. Right. So, so as a result of that, have I have to beat Destin. I get it. So yeah. he's beaten by two of us. Yeah. There is a <laughs> the idea. Listeners, every year, a different listener has actually made a trophy. Wow. Really? Uh, and they're, the, the theme has just become they're made out of old Xbox controllers. So the first one was the Dookie, and it was a, it was a bronzed Duke controller. And then there was the uh, the Essie for the the uh, original Xbox, the smaller yeah. non Duke mm-hmm. original Xbox controller. That was last year, right? Yeah, that and, was cool. And this this year is the uh, the the I guess it's just the 360. Is that what we're calling? I don't yeah. know what we're calling. I haven't seen this. Year's I have to one look yet. at the pictures again from the gentleman uh, that's making it. But oh, it's so nice. It's so cool. If you want to try and stump the panel, we should have stump Dustin. Hopefully, everybody kind of uh, we'll we'll get uh, Marty and Destin back next week to uh, to really turn up the heat on this. Send your Xbox trivia question to unlocked at ign.com. Please include four multiple choice answers and note the correct one in your email. Time to go. Yeah, it's yes, been fun. Thank you, for Lucy me. O'Brien. Always a pleasure. You are the best. You are. Uh, but Daisy's here. But Lucy, you're great. But I'm sick of this. I I will She's step down for Daisy. <laughs> I would like to point out. If anybody has noticed uh, that I, she has the yellow. I chose yellow for because her name's Daisy. Very nice. Oh. Aww. So for the collar nice. there. So, so sweet. They had a, they had a million color choices, and I was like, well, let me find. Picking colors for your dogs is hard. Like yeah. you got to get the right color. It's true. It's got to yeah. fit their personality. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, f- so Lucy, what are you working on? Where can we find you? Twitter, all that stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Luce O'Brien, L-U-C-E O'Brien, no apostrophe. For awesome cat pictures. Ma- yeah, I do talk about my cat a lot, so uh, I apologize in advance. No, don't apologize. Um, <laughs> but he is the greatest. Daisy's the greatest dog. Boof is the greatest cat. <laughs> That that boy has a personality. He I really think. does. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's great. He's very. Please good. post more pictures. Oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause don't like, worry, Ryan. Like, I'm away for a week, so when I get back and I'm gonna see him, and I'm just gonna be like, oh my god, yeah. my boy, my boy, <laughs> how I've missed you! Like coming home from. How old is he? You haven't had him for that long, right? Uh, a couple of years. Yeah, he's he's a rescue, so we're not sure of gotcha. his exact age, but uh, he's we think he's about three. Yeah. Three and a half. Yeah. Good stuff. I smell my tea. Yeah, every time that I open my protein shake or like move it, she's like, "What's up with that?" That's a smell that <laughs> I might like, be able to ingest. I did not authorize this movement. Alana, what are you up to? What am I up to? I'm hosting the Daily Fix now, so that's Yay. a thing. Excellent. Been making some changes to that to try and make it sort of more opinion based and editorial, um, a little, little less like strict news. And that's that's a, a huge project that we have ahead of us because it's such a legacy show, and of, of course Naomi did such an amazing job. Um, but that's up every day on IGN. Aside from that. I'm working on a lot of features right now. I'm actually, one that I'm very, very excited about is uh, about whether games should actually cost $60 and the price of games and the profit. Um, Because the logic is like, we need microtransactions because games are too expensive. So I'm interviewing a bunch of people off the record and trying to put that together. It's taking me a while, but um, I'm excited to publish that hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Excellent. Miranda. Oh, well, I just got done with the Call of Duty review. Yes. So I'm taking a break. (laughs) <laughs> um, yes. Everything. From everything. Um, kind you were doing the Mario wiki I'm, immediately before I'm, that, right? I'm back still doing that. <laughs> gotcha. So I'm working on the Mario wiki. Um, of course, please check out my Call of Duty World War II review. And I'm hopefully going to start working on some more anime projects. And maybe some opinion pieces about Call of Duty, because I have more things to say. You should totally do that. Great. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. I want to... Uh, this was like... I mentioned this in a, in a video, uh, but Xbox fans, this month's... IGN Unfiltered interview is for you. I had it posts next week. The full episodes on the whatever the Tuesday is, which I think is the fourteenth. And I had uh, the first first time I've ever interviewed two people. Yeah, 
Chad and Jared Moldenhauer, the two brothers who co-founded Studio MDHR, uh, and of course made Cuphead with uh, with uh, other Moldenhauers. It was yeah. a whole family affair. It's we like get thirteen people in total, or something. 14, Fourteen, I believe it was. Uh, yeah. We also have a Let's Play going up with those for the Unlock channel on youtubecom slash Unlock. So waiting on someone to edit that right now because everything's insane because there's so many games coming out. But it should be up on Monday, hopefully. Yeah, so. that was uh, so. Me and Chad Moldenhauer. Mm -hmm did a timed speed challenge in two stages against uh, Lily, mm -hmm. from, who is the, the single biggest Cuphead fan, and possibly our, probably our She's been best playing Cuphead on my player. save file, yeah. and I can see the hours played, and yeah. it is well over 24. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> oh boy. Lily and, uh, and Jared. So uh, it's me and Chad against Lily and Jared, so that's- Did you get destroyed? You'll have to watch it <laughs> and find out. It does, it, it's, it, Put it this way, it ends a lot closer than it appears that it's going to. Oh, all right, good to know. But that, Exciting I'll just stuff. throw that in there. But yeah, they were in here for the day a couple weeks ago, and they they were kind enough to go through the IGN car wash mm -hmm. and do a bunch of stuff with us, including that unfiltered. This well, are they local? Oh no, they're they're uh, they're actually they. Uh, Chad lives at, in the Toronto area. I totally forgot Jared that game is, was basically developed without a studio. Yep. There's people all in different mm -hmm. places. Which was uh, uh, Moon Studios, the Ori and the Blind Forest team is that way. Oh, too. really? So it's like two amazing Xbox exclusives that were made in a totally decentralized way. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Is uh, Ori 2 doing that? I don't know if they've if they've united. and Interesting. Yeah, to look into that. That's, that's, cool. a, good, that's a good point. Anyway, uh, it's really good unfiltered. We had an awesome chat about about them leaving behind their day jobs mm -hmm. and, d and diving Making into the game. Making this incredible dev. game. Yeah. So really looking forward to that. That airs on the 14th. Uh, for the fantastic Lucy O'Brien, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Alana Pierce, always good to have you here, of thank course. You. Miranda Sanchez, please join us more often. We'll happily do that. Excellent. And I'm Ryan McCaffrey for the... Adorable Daisy the Boxer Seriously, if puppy. you're listening to the She's audio version, why? You can, there's a puppy here. You can follow her on Instagram, Daisy the Boxer Puppy. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm following her. Yeah. It's good. It's all one word, Daisy yeah. the Boxer Puppy. That's her Instagram. And it's just all puppy pictures. What are you going to do when she's not a puppy anymore? It's, it's She's a puppy so forever. Da Daisy yeah. the Boxer was taken. They're so all gotcha. She's They're just going to be yeah. puppy her whole life. Yeah. 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 Which, if you, you remember Maggie. Yeah. Puppy her whole life, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, totally. Some dogs are yeah. like that. Get that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.